Have you ever been inside a hobby shop and you saw this totally rad bodacious model car and you wanted to know what was in that box before you bought it? Today I want to show you this really cool Toyota Supra from MPC. And if you can survive to the end of this video, I'm going to show you a really bodacious looking model car kit that you might want to see next. Quit all that jive talking Trevor, let's go down to the bench and see what's in the box. 1983 saw some really amazing movies. We got such greats as Christine, Cheech and Chong still smoking, Strange Brew, Trading Places, a Zelig. We got the beginning of the Vacation series with National Lampoon's Summer Vacation, and even Roger Moore was here in Octopussy. And we also got this really amazing Toyota Supra model kit by MPC. This one was molded in sparkling blue metallic finish and was a golden opportunity kit in 125th scale for ages 10 to adult. On this side of the box we can see the amazing features. This model is molded in sparkling blue metallic, has bright plated parts and many optional accessories. We get custom body panels, window louvers, air dam and spoiler, overhead cam engine with optional turbocharger, wide radial tires on custom or stock wheels, and a detailed interior and chassis. And with this model kit of this era, we also had the golden wheels. You collected the golden wheels, cut them out, and sent the tokens over to MPC, and you received a bonus MPC model kit absolutely free. And on this side of the box, we get a showing of the model and the actual size. And it says for the modeler of moderate experience, Bright plated parts, molded in blue, many optional parts, cement required for assembly, model may be painted to match the illustrations, and paint and cement is not included. This is also a Fun Dimensions kit which came out in 83. Now let's take the lid off this model kit and see what we have inside. It is a bit of a tight fit, so there we go. Now we get the instructions in here. This model is second hand, so a lot of parts are put in a Ziploc. There's the decals in the smoke colored windows. Here's our chrome parts. And then we get that nice sparkling metallic blue color for our plastic. And look at all the parts trees you get in this amazing kit. It would be nice to see round two re-release this, but at this point it's not there. But maybe when you take a look at this video in the future, you might be lucky. And there's our engine and everything. And there's our chassis. We also get these really nice rubber tires in here. Just perfect to build this model with. Hello everybody, this is Danny the dog again and I get to show you the instruction sheet which is really really cool. So up here we've got a note that says this was bought May 31st 2004 from Model Express. Do you guys remember that website? That was a great website. Hopefully Monster Hobbies can be like that one one day. So here we have the nice Toyota Celica Supra in the original font back then. We've got the nice paint guide here. You need silver, flat black, gloss black, white, gray, tan, red, yellow, orange, and blue in order to complete this model. And then down here we've got the engine going together, which we'll take a closer look at right now. So Trevor told me that he bought this model because this is one of the cars he'd actually like to own in real life. And I can see why, because here you have this wonderful fuel injected straight six with the automatic transmission. And uh, this has got that nice cylinder head up there, the dual overhead cam that uh, goes on here, the front cover, there's the oil pan. So gluing all this together would make for a really cool looking engine block. Now panel two shows more of the engine going together. There's the overhead cam there and the cover which goes on the top. And then there we've got our intake manifold as well and the air cleaner. And there's more of that two piece air cleaner right there. Now panel three shows our belts and pulleys going on there with the power steering pump and the alternator and even the air conditioner. And there's our fan and all that would go right onto the front of our engine cover. Panel four shows our turbocharger being all hooked up and glued into place. And again, this would be a really cool, really fast car. Panel five right here in the middle is showing our tires and wheels going all together. So here you have the option of the stock wheels or the custom four spoke wheels, which are really, really cool looking either way you go. And there's our nice BF Goodrich radial TA tire right there. You got to cut that web out of the center. There's our backing plate and our wheel back. 
So make sure you don't get any glue in the backing plate or your wheels will be locked on there forever. Now here we get into panel 6, which shows the front suspension being dropped down onto our frame. And then we have the McPherson strut type front end all gluing into place. Panel 7 shows our rear independent suspension being all glued in together. Unfortunately it's not independent in this model, it's one piece. But still that makes it easy, you drop down and then you put on your shock absorbers and the differential cover and then you got that nice cross brace right in there as well. Panel 8 shows the engine being dropped onto the chassis and that'll be really really cool. Panel 9 we hook up our drive shaft and this one is double jointed in the center so that's cool and then we've got our exhaust manifold and catalytic converter all being put into place with a nice chrome tailpipe extension on the back. Panel 10 shows our completed wheels being glued onto the rear axle and I'd assume you actually put them on the front axle too because it does say to do this four times, it's just not shown in the drawing. In panel 11 we show our dashboard being glued together, there it is with the steering column and the steering wheel. And now I'm just going to say some of the songs that came out in 1983. We have Sweet Dreams by The Arrhythmics, Mr. Roboto by Styx, She Works Hard for the Money by Donna Summers, Hot Girls in Love by Loverboy, Come Dancing by The Kinks, In a Big Country by Big Sky, Girls Just Want to Have Fun by Cindy Loper, New Year's Day by U2, Sunday Bloody Sunday by U2 as well, and Come On Feel the Noise by Quiet Riot. Now how many of you people actually get up and dance once those songs come on the radio? Let me know in the comments below. Anyway, here's our interior. This is a big bucket style. We got a two-piece rear seat. We've got a top for our console right there. Then we got two-piece bucket seats, which you build up two times, of course, left and right. And then our dashboard goes into place. A really cool interior, dudes. This model kit also has the sunroof, but it is webbed inside here with the plastic. So you got to snip that out with your snippers and clean up that area with the file. Panel 14 shows our glass going up into the body. This includes the windshield and the back pieces of glass. And there's our nice chrome mirror also going into place. Panel 15 shows our radiator with our radiator shroud all being glued into place and then put up here on the front retaining wall. Panel 16 shows our brake master cylinder being glued onto the booster and then our firewall being glued onto the back here. Our interior being popped up into place and then our chassis going up underneath. And make sure that you get these McPherson struts lined up with the top of the, sh the uh, shock towers before you go and put this all together. Panel 17 shows the upper radiator hose being attached in from the top of the motor to the radiator itself. And here we have this nice more modern looking battery being dropped into place right behind the front headlight. Now here you have your choice between the stock top of the engine with all the hoses going in or the turbo version with the turbocharger right here. So make sure you make your choice and drop in the appropriate parts. Now here's a tuner option for our Supra. We can add in this nice little hood bulge right here, which would be sort of for the turbo version. Panel 20 shows the optional louvers we can drop into the car. So there's the ones for the back window and the ones for the side glass. In panel 20, we can see the side mirrors being glued in place and the front lower bumper, as well as this splash apron down here and our clear turn signal lenses. Here's another optional piece. We've got the spoiler which glues on to the back, gives it a more racy look. And then we've got our rear bumper and our two red tail lamps. Panel 23 shows our side flares being glued in place. Now this of course is for your tuner version and will look really really cool as an IMSA style race car as well. Finally we've got an image of all our decal placements. So there we've got the Toyota Supra which go out the back. We've got this nice license plate in here, some stripes, all kinds of cool stuff. And then here we've also got our clear panel for our sunroof to drop in. Okay Trevor, now it's your turn to show us all the plastic parts. Yeah Danny, I could show you this totally radical body on here. Now check this thing out you guys, look at how great this is. There's that mesh in between the windows, so you know this kit has never been uh, started or anything. Look at the nice uh, Toyota door handles. It sort of reminds me of American Motors, actually. 
that's pretty cool. Lots of nice little detail on the A pillars. And then we've got our gas filler cap right in here. I do believe the uh, proportions of this are pretty accurate. Look underneath the hood there, you get the windshield wiper bottle, the tops of the shock towers, the coil, all kinds of cool stuff. And right there is the actual hood catch. And then there's our headlights. Unfortunately, they do not flip up. A little bit of a sink mark up there, but that should be easy to fill and get because there's nothing there to interfere with. The nice little Toyota emblem right there on the hood. Again, really awesome work by MPC. Look at the back where the tail lights go. Everything looks accurate, nice and clean. Uh, ooh, even has the dome lights up above and the controls for the sunroof, as well as some nice, nice, uh, what do you call that? Headliner material up there. Boy, my voice is grumbly today. <laughs> and then we've got some sink marks up top here, but shouldn't be too much of a hassle to get rid of. A couple in here, which might just need to be sanded down a little bit. Not too much flash, just maybe, well, I guess a bit, sort of a sign of the times back then. This parts tree shows the amazing chassis. And as you can see, there's a lot of nice detail underneath here. There's those McPherson struts. Now this does have the pins for steering, but unfortunately all the steering linkage is molded into the top panel. There's our shock absorbers and our double knuckled differential, or sorry, drive shaft. There's our differential there. And this has the independent suspension as well, which is really cool. So when one of these wheels goes up, it actually moves the uh, arms off the differential instead of being a solid one like on the American cars. Take a look at all that nice crisp detail under there. Kind of a shame to uh, paint the flat black underneath here as the metallic plastic is, well, I guess it's okay. It's sort of a light powder blue. I'm not really sure what color I'd actually paint this car. All I know is that I would like one in real life. I think these supers are amazing. Our next parts tree includes the top of the sunroof. This is not a glass version, this is actually a solid roof. Our wheel backs, our steering wheel, our firewall, and many of the other great components like the muffler and catalytic converter, the engine block with the transmission, a lot of the turbo parts, and our belts and pulleys. Let's just bring this up into the camera here. Look at that nice uh, firewall detail. Really great looking stuff. There's our radiator, and look at the engine block. Isn't that amazing? It looks just like the real thing. Only smaller! Aha! There's our fans and everything. Again, nice work. Let's turn this over. You can see some old marks, but this also has the uh, texture in there as well, so that's nice. There you go, really cool looking. Another great parts tree by MPC. Here we have the parts tree that includes our interior components. Now some of the bucket seats did fall out of here, so we'll take a look at those a little bit later. But there's that nice interior bucket. Look at all the great detail on there. Wow, it's, that's some nice stuff. You even get that strap in the back. Now I'm not sure, I think that holds down the spare tire. I'm not 100% sure on these cars. I just remember uh, our shop used to have some of these come in in high school. Um, we got to uh, do them in grade 12. <laughs> Look at the detail on the seats. Isn't that amazing? Looks just like the real thing. There's the old Fun Dimensions logo on the back of the interior. And then there's the two-piece rear seat, as well as our steering column. Really excellent stuff. I'm sure I'm going to have fun putting this together in the future. Next up on our journey through the Supra, we have all the nice body components that go in here, such as our hood, and there's that bulge for this side of the hood. Here's our optional louvers, and then we've got a lot of the flared out body panels, and we'll take a look at some more of the fender ones in just a moment. So again, really nice looking stuff. Look at the detail on that front bumper, just like the real Toyota. Awesome sauce. <laughs> I can't wait to build this. Again, some old marks up underneath, but you can easily remove those with that number 16 hobby blade with the scraper type edge. And just to carry on a little bit, here's the front and rear fender flares. Again, nice work if you want to make a sort of an IMSA race car or even just a really cool looking tuner. Couple of mold marks underneath again, which are easily cleaned up. But look at that amazing detail, A plus. Now here we have the loose components. 
But again, as you can see, the detail on here is striking. It's so striking, in fact, I might have to uh, sue them for assault. <laughs> no, but seriously. Um, here, take a look at the dashboard, for example. Now, I know one thing that I'd like to hear on this tape cassette, or radio, in fact, which would be Trooper by Iron Maiden. Wouldn't that be awesome driving down the street listening to that? And take a look at the gauge cluster in here. Really looks just like the real thing. Got the pedals on. Oh, I guess this is a standard. It's not an automatic, so that's my bad. That's my bad. Anyway, look at the glove box and everything. Just perfect detail on here. Again, we've got the bottom seat cushions, which look simply amazing. There we go. Let the camera focus in. Interesting how the seats are all arranged. It's even got the mesh in there for you to put in your pocket notebook or whatever you've got. Not uh, like a electronic notebook, but you know, good old pen and paper. There's the front rack and pinion steering system. It's too bad it doesn't actually extend out so you could uh, steer and pose the wheels. But again, looks really nice. The nice uh, engine pan underneath here to protect against uh, road rocks and whatever. Take a look at this uh, oil pan. Real amazing stuff. Even has the filler plug in there. It's totally accurate, just like the real car. We've got our nice little 12 volt battery. This one's a little more modern. It's got the uh, plastic caps that go over top of the three holes per side. So again, that's uh, more of an 80s style, getting away from the six individual little posts like back in the 60s. And then there's our rear spoiler. Again, very nice, couple of mold marks in there. A little bit of the um, this detail kind of came through on this side, unless that's just streaks from the metallic plastic because that's what happens with metallic plastics. Then there's part of our engine components and one of the uh, mufflers, it looks like. Yeah, the exhaust manifold. Here we have our nice chrome parts tree. One thing that's kind of weird is I think uh, somebody at MPC pulled this off the mold and uh, in a hurry because take a look at that curve on there. Now, hopefully that won't affect any of these small parts. They are pretty short and, uh, you know, pretty narrow and close to the edge, so hopefully they're not slightly warped. But those are the valve covers. And then uh, here we've got our, yeah, these are the stock wheels, I believe, and these ones are the custom rally wheels. So again, really cool looking stuff. The chrome on here is really nice. And uh, I don't believe there's very many if any, mold marks off the back. So again, a really nice piece of chrome that came with this model. Here we have our glass components. And as Danny showed in the instructions, these look like they were molded as one piece all the way across, but they're actually two individual pieces. Sadly, these were never in a plastic bag and the tires sat on here and did melt it a little bit on the glass as we can see in a minute. It does have the defroster molded in the back. And another weird thing, Model Express put the tail lamps in between a piece of masking tape and unfortunately all the tape glue has stuck onto these uh, tail lamps. So I'll have to try to get that off with some general purpose paint thinner, not lacquer thinner, guys, because <laughs> that would just mess them up. But take a look at the back. Look at all that waffle texture in there. I don't know if you can see that too well. Again, really amazing looking, just like the real thing. Now here's our windows, and as you can see, there's a tire mark right in there. Ah, that's That always sucks, I hate that. <laughs> and then our rear window. So I'll have to use a polishing kit and really try to smooth all this out, which is a big pain, and never looks right at the end of the day. But I have seen some really cool things where people will actually use a, a chemical on there, and uh, it makes the clear windows again. Take a look at some of the what the Hot Wheel guys do to restore the windshields. That's what I'm talking about. So it's it's almost like a future floor, floor polish, but I hate future floor polish. It's actually something better than that. So there you go. And here we have the tires for the kit. Now these are BF Goodrich radial TAs, and there's that nice tread pattern on there. However, I do have one pro slight problem with this kit. I only have three of the tires. This one here is actually a Goodyear radial GT from the parts box. Uh, the one thing though is that these tires could be interchanged. They're almost the same diameter and the inner hole is pretty much the same thing. 
so I might have to replace them with Goodyear's unless I can find another BF Goodrich sitting somewhere. So now I'm back again to show you the decal sheet. And man, this is right out of the 80s. Take a look at the colors on here. This is sort of a sunburst type pattern. You got yellow, orange, and then red. Oh, it'll look pretty cool if you painted the car black, actually. And here we've got a plate you don't see too often. This is a South Dakota license plate, RRG 711. And it even has the 1983 registry on here. So that's pretty cool to get an authentic plate. And then you also get these nice little Supras with the dragon on there. I really hope that this video helps you in your decision on your next model car kit. And if you want to see what model cars I have for sale, check out this cool link over here. It'll take you right to our website. And don't forget to subscribe right down here. Now, as promised, here's a really cool model car video that you should check out next. Well, I hope you can join us next time as we take a look at more of these amazing kits from the 1980s. And until next time, everyone, be excellent to each other. Now we'd like to thank all our supporters on YouTube and Patreon. Domo Arigato!